what it is. I am Controlled Pairs. This is Controlled Pairs Gaming, and welcome to the first episode of Kerbal Space Program for Dummies, the Absolute Beginner's Guide. In this episode, I am going to teach you guys how to orbit. The reason I'm doing this series is because Kerbal Space Program recently entered full release, and the community is rapidly expanding. I want all of these new players to become as passionate about Kerbal Space Program as I am, because I think it's one of the greatest games of our time, and you're really going to enjoy it once you learn the basics. That said, I hope you stick around, I hope you enjoy the video, I hope you learn from it. If you do, hook me up with a like, comment below, and if you would, please consider subscribing to the channel and help me reach my goal of 50 subscribers by the end of the week, I would greatly appreciate it. Now let's dive in. First, we're going to construct our orbiter. What you see in front of you is a Mark 1 command pod, the most basic command pod in the game. On top of that is a Mark 16 parachute. Start off by constructing those two very quickly. Next, you're going to grab a heat shield and you are going to place it directly underneath the command pod. After that, you are going to grab a TR-18A stack decoupler, place it underneath the heat shield. Next, you're going to grab an inline advanced stabilizer and click right there, slap it underneath that decoupler. Next up, you're going to get your first fuel tank, an FLT-200 fuel tank. Put it underneath that SAS. You're going to grab one more of those fuel tanks and smack it underneath there. Next, you're going to get an LV-909 Terrier liquid fuel engine, followed by another TR-18A stack decoupler. Underneath that decoupler, you are going to grab an FLT-800 fuel tank, followed by a FLT-400 fuel tank. On the very bottom, you are going to put your LVT-30 Reliant engine. Gentlemen, this is going to be your basic orbiter for Kerbal Space Program 1.0. There's thousands of ways you can construct something that goes up into orbit. This is what we're going to be teaching you guys on today, so go ahead and construct this thing and then continue in the video as we teach you how to achieve orbit. Alright, now we find ourselves on the launch pad. Let's get oriented real quick. First and foremost, on the right side of the screen, you see Flight Engineer 1.0.16.6. You don't have that on your screen. It's a mod. Don't even worry about it. On the bottom of the screen is the nav ball. This is what we use to actually pilot. You control your aircraft with the W, A, S, and D keys. Go ahead and hit spacebar to initiate your liftoff. Now use shift and control to either accelerate or decelerate as you launch. For now, go ahead and hold down shift and maximize your throttle all the way forward. You'll begin to accelerate. Now, as you accelerate, very, very carefully tap the D key on your keyboard. You are going to see the nav ball on the bottom start to pitch over to the right, to the east, at 90 degrees. When I say 90 degrees, that's the direction to travel, not a 90 degree turn. So as we pitch over to the east, you will notice on the nav ball that the chevron, that is the horizontal straight line, followed by a little chevron, followed by another horizontal straight line, starts to pitch over as well. That chevron is your direction of travel. Directly underneath of that, the yellow marker, that is a little circle with a tick mark on top, that is your actual true direction of travel. The chevron is the direction you're pointing, that yellow circle is your actual direction of travel. We need to keep our chevron aligned with our prograde vector, your direction of travel, in order to prevent the rocket from spinning out of control. Now we continue to pitch over at 90 degrees, slowly but surely moving our direction of travel and the nose of our rocket towards that 45 degree line on our nav ball. A good rule for gravity turns is that when you hit 20,000 meters of altitude, as indicated right now on the top of the screen, you want to be right at 45,000 or 45 degrees of rotation, having completed 45 degrees of that gravity turn. Now we ran out of fuel in our first stage. We hit spacebar to separate our first stage, and we continue to accelerate towards what we call our APO apps. Hit M to enter your map view as I just did and then put your mouse cursor over the Kerbin APO apps as indicated by the AP on your orbital trajectory there over the planet of Kerbin. We're going to push that APO apps up so that it is above 75,000 meters of al altitude. As soon as it's above 75,000 meters of altitude, click on it and add a maneuver node as you see me doing right now. When you add that maneuver node, you're going to see a little, um, a bunch of little symbols appear off of it. The only one you need to worry about right now is the prograde vector. It looks just like the one on your nav ball. If you push that away from the center of the maneuver node, you will project a burn, meaning you are actually planning when you will next fire your engines. If you stretch it to the right, you're going to see the circle that is your orbit around Kerbin expand, and if you pull it back to the left, you're going to see it get smaller. You want to pull it to the right until the numbers on both sides of your 
orbit are relatively equivalent. As soon as you do that, hit M to exit map mode, and now you will have a blue reticle on your nav ball. That is the direction that you must be pointed whenever you fire your engines on that maneuver node. I know I'm going fast. If you need to rewind and listen to it again and watch what I did during the actual burn, please feel free to do so. Now, we have the maneuver node planned. You see I fired my engines. You want to make sure that you fire your engine where 50% of your burn takes place before T, as in the T hour, and 50% takes place after T hour. In this in this case, the estimated burn time was roughly 80 seconds, so I know I need to aim at that maneuver node and fire my engines approximately 40 seconds before T and 40 seconds after T. When I do that, I jump back into map mode and I make sure I'm watching my nav ball at the bottom of the screen and staying oriented on that blue marker and watching my estimated burn time. I'll continue to fire those engines while pointed at that blue marker until the estimated burn is all the way down to zero. The time left remaining in your burn is indicated on the estimated burn as well as that yellow bar that's continuously decreasing. So we continue to burn down those engines and continue to fire that maneuver node until we get the estimated burn as close to zero as possible. Here you see I cut the engines right at one second. I did that by pressing X on the keyboard and then I realigned to that blue maneuver node. Now I'm making very minor corrections by slowly increasing the throttle until there is as close to zero meters per second left in the burn as possible. Now that we've completed that maneuver node, we should have an orbit similar to the one that we projected earlier on. You see I check my perapsis and my apoapse, they're still a little bit different. One's about 73k, one's about 85k. This is a great opportunity to demonstrate basics and orbital mechanics. I'm going to fast forward by pressing period on the keyboard and then pressing comma to slow down time acceleration until I've reached the apoapsis. That is the highest point of my orbit. Think of it as an ellipse, and right now we're at the highest point of that ellipse. When I get to that highest point on the orbit, I orient prograde on my nav ball. That is that yellow marker on my nav ball. And then I slowly accelerate until I push the other side right to about 86 as well. Now you see here, I have my perapse and my apoapse both at 86,000 meters above Kerbin. That is a per perfectly circularized orbit. You can tinker with this and learn from it and get better from it. Thanks for tuning in.